Hi folks, thanks very much for joining me for this week's River Tutorial. Uh, what you see in the vise is a variation on Sawyer's pheasant tail. So without further ado, let's get into it. So in the vise is a Hanak H260 barbless hook. This one's at size 14. It's a black nickel hook and it's heavy wire. And that's the only weight I'm going to uh, use on this fly. I think it's very easy to get trapped in the fact that you need to put tungsten beads on every fly that you tie now for the rivers, and that's just not the case. Sometimes you want just a very light fly to fish. The thread I'm going to be using today is the Sempify. It's Flow Red, and it's at 12 volt. As you can see, uh, although they call it Flow Red, I think it looks more orangey, but uh, that's what I'm using. Because I want to have that little hot head at the end. Now I've already added some wax to the thread to save a bit of time and I'm going to catch that just in behind the eye. I'll run it up to where approximately a barb would be on a hook and remove my waist. Next then I'm going to add the tailing and what I've got with these kind of flies, I just find feathers that I've left over on my bench and I've got this little ginger hackle and I'm going to take approximately four or five fibres, it's not a big tail, and just dress that up. I want it to protrude approximately a quarter of an inch past the bend of the hook. Hold it on top, get a couple of turns in to see the length, happy enough with that. And then you can lock it in to the position you want it. Cock up your waist and just remove the fibres. Now the, uh, the rib is a copper rib. Unfortunately I've lost the label. It's small though and I've already got a little piece that I've got here. And I'm going to catch that in the complete length of the body. Although it'll, it'll be a minimal effect on the weight of the fly, it does help keep it nice and even. And then I'll come back down to where I started. The body of the fly then is, as the name suggests, a pheasant. And I'm going to grab a couple of strands, rip them away, and I'm going to capture the tips just again the length of the body and once I've got that in place I can run my thread all the way up to the thorax area and just forget about that for the moment I'll just run it straight up to the eye actually give myself a little bit of room now the pheasant's quite delicate you can use hackle pliers but because this is such a small fly uh, I'm just going to use my fingers Again, I'm just taking some care to avoid the point of the hook. And bear with me while I just wrap it up the body. As I get near the end, I can bring my thread off the, off the, the eye. And then cross over to meet the pheasant tail. Once I've got that trapped in place and coming with my snips and remove my waist. Now the rib, I want to have three turns showing really on this size of fly. So there's one, I want to have it nice, evenly spaced, a couple of millimetres apart and then the fourth turn is going to be where the thorax is. Now at this point I'm just putting two or three extra wraps of wire to just add a little bit to the heavy gauge hook and that'll help with the fly sinking. Uh, I don't know what old Frank Sawyer would have made of uh, all the tungsten beads and jig backs and various other methods to get weight onto flies now, adhesive lead foil, um, 
I think he would be quite amazed by it, to be honest. But what I'm going to do next is add a little tiny bit of wax just up there because I'm going to trap in my thorax cover and what I'm going to do is give this fly a little bit of bling and I'm doing that with some Vivas P01 it's medium and again I have got a little bit that I've had off here and I'm going to catch that in just at the top now just a little tip when you're tying in your thorax covers, if you start it slightly towards yourself and you bring the thread over away from you, it will want to turn and what you end up with is it coming directly off the thorax cover. That's worth um, knowing instead of trying to lay it directly on top uh, of the shank of the hook and then catching it in and then you find it's trying to stray round the side but if you start on this side, then that can help you out. Okay, now there's a number of things you can use for the thorax. I'm going to use Lindsay's Killer Shrimp. Uh, this is the Trout Stalker Scruffy Dubbin. Um, but any sort of squirrel or hare's ear type dub at the front here will serve you well. Yeah, I just like this one. It's easy to work with and uh, it gives a pleasing effect to the fly. Now, I always like to start with less and then add rather than try and strip it away, especially as I'm going to be using this thread as a, as a hot spot head. So what I don't want is any dubbing on the thread at this point and I don't want any wax because I want the vibrant colour to show through when I finish it off. Next then, comes across the thorax cover and I'm going to catch that in with a couple of turns and then I'm going to bring it back over on itself and once I'm content that that's all caught in I'll remove my excess thorax cover And then I'm going to add a little bit of UV resin to my thread before coming in with the quick finish tool and creating my hot head. Now before I snip that off I am just going to cure off the resin. So if anything goes untoward, your, your, your head's not going to spring away from you. Take that away. And then if you wish, you can come in again and colour the head with a bit of colour. Coat the head with a little bit more resin and uh, that will make it stand out even more. Just take away any extra long fibres that you have. I would normally use a set of tweezers for this, but I've, I've left them on my other bench. And there we go. Uh, a nice small fly, literally unweighted. There's a little bit of copper in there, and it's a heavy gauge hook. But that's more than enough for, for what I need. So, thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about clicking the button now. And I'll see you all next time.